In this video I'll be demonstrating Google Android 2.2 running on a Samsung NC10 netbook. This was made possible by the builds of Android, Android for standard x86 processors available at android-x86.org. If you want to do this yourself you can either download a pre-compiled ISO image of Android 1.6 which is the most I've got at the moment but this may have changed by the time you're watching this video. But if you want to do anything above that, like 2.2 here, I had to compile it myself. So you can do that on a Linux machine. Um, and it can take a bit of work. They've got some vague instructions there. I've got some instru I've got a link in the description. But you need to do a bit of your own legwork to get things like the Wi-Fi working and to run it so the mouse works properly because the mouse was a bit funny at first. So I'll just turn it on and we'll see how it works. So switch the machine on. Notice I'm using an SD card. I've got Android installed in the internal system, but to download stuff in the web browser like apps, you need to have an SD card in. Okay, so it's going to come up here, and I've got this bootloader, you have to choose the MDPI version, I'll just zoom in so you can see that. I do apologise for not being able to use a screen recording program for this, but that's because I'm using Android, so I'll zoom in there. Hopefully you can see this okay, I do apologise for the quality of the video. Okay, so I'm going to choose the MDPI, basically the difference is the HDPI has much lower screen resolution it seems to be, so everything on the screen is really big, so I'm going to put it down to that so I can actually fit more on the screen and it's better to use. Somewhere. Press that, I'm going to start booting. So it's detecting Android x86 and it's found it. And you're going to get our basic Android Linux sort of prompt type of thing. Type of thing. And now you get the Android boot screen. Not the fast thing to start up in the world, especially for Android, but it works nicely. So that's it booted. Now to log in so you can just slide these things do work so we can slide that down that'll take me to the sound off thing slide that up and we're into Android so this is the sort of main screen you've got your five different home screens you can flick between them like that basically just like normal Android it's obviously not as nice using a mouse you know I'm to use a touchpad for this so yeah it's not as nice and the mouse is a bit odd it seems to go up fa nice and very fast up and down and slowly left to right, so it can be quite hard to point at times. So you've got to get used to it. And also the keyboard shortcuts you've got to note because on an Android device you're going to have a home button and a back button. On this you don't have it, so using the escape key takes you back one step and the Windows key takes you home. So I'll show you that just now. So if I go out again, you'll see the keyboard. Okay, so if I go into something in the menu, that's a nice Android menu, fades in very well, it's very fast. So if I go in somewhere like that, if I press escape, it takes me back one step through the menu. If I go back into there. If I press the Windows key, it takes me right back to the home screen. So that's the thing you need to remember when you're using this. Escape also takes you back in the browser. You've also got this little bar at the top you can pull up and down. For some reason, however, sometimes it only comes to this width, the width of this thing here. It doesn't go any wider. But other times it does this. It's just a bit odd. Worked well though. So if you want to go on the internet, let's open up Google. You can use that shortcut sort of thing there, and it'll load up, or you can use the browser icon. This is one of the main annoyances you're seeing now, is that it's always trying to load mobile versions of sites, so you've got to always change them to their desktop version if you want to do that. It can be a bit annoying at times, and even then Google doesn't seem to behave, it doesn't seem to stay on that. As soon as I close the browser or restart the machine, it's back there. And I tried changing the browser user agent into a desktop one, but it still doesn't work. So we can go to my site for example, put my website in, and there you go. And it's, it has obviously loaded the mobile version of my site, so we're going to have to scroll down and change that down here to that, and you can just change it back to the full version. And there you have my website. Next annoyance is that embedded videos and flash things don't work. So you'll see I just get this little plug-in thing, I'll just come up just now. It just doesn't work, you just get a sort of blank screen. I've, before I've had like a little Lego brick in the middle, but it's not there anymore. So if you want to watch YouTube, you have to actually go to YouTube site. So if I go to YouTube.com. You also have to go to the mob make sure you're on the mobile version of YouTube. So I'm on the full one just now. I've changed the mobile one. So otherwise that if I don't use the mobile one it just gives me a warning about not having flash. If you use the mobile one it does work, so I'll just demonstrate that. The 
Just load up one of my videos, there we go. And it gives you a sort of full screen viewer thing and it plays. The quality isn't great. It's quite very quite a low frame rate it seems to be. You'll see just now. It's quite jumpy. It does work though, so you can use it. As far as apps go, yes, you can install install apps that you want. So here I've got some apps, most of these just came with it, but I've installed the OI file manager, which allows me to browse things on the SD card and the internal storage. But you can't really save stuff in internal storage for some reason. The main irritating thing though is there's no marketplace because this isn't a official Google device. For Google to allow you to put the marketplace on devices, it has to meet special requirements such as containing a phone and having a screen of less than or equal to 7 inches. That's why things like the Galaxy Tab has a phone in it. It's one, that's one of the reasons is so you can actually use the marketplace. Without that, you're not allowed it. I think it's also got to have like a GPS strip and an accelerometer. So this device doesn't have that, so you can't have the marketplace for some reason. Hopefully Google change that. So when you're installing apps, you've either got to use a third party third marketplace, like the AND app store it's called, which does work, or the Slide Me app store, which also works quite well. So I'm just going to demonstrate how, you install, how you'd install an app on here, so just find something to install. Um, utilities. So there's anything decent to install. So you've got quite you have a lot of apps, that's quite good. And that's actually another thing. If you want to bring up the little barrel on the bottom like this, um you can't really see anything on that, but it's the bar with all the options like search and things. And most apps have one of these. You can use the little menu button on the keyboard. That's it. There yeah, one's the little menu on it. Does that. Okay. So let's demonstrate installing an app here. Just installed off in browser HD. So you want to do that, you have to go into here, press download, press install. There's lots of third party marketplaces like this that do work. That's installing, and then you can press install. Installing, I've can install it open. And there you go. For some reason it starts off sideways, um, but I can, I can use it. There you go. You can go through here and it all works. So that's an app just which installed. And you can see it's now appeared in my menu. You can also do your Android thing, hold that down and drag it and drop it on the home screen and also drag it off there. Back to there. If you want to uninstall the app, you just go into settings, applications, manage applications, pick your application you want to uninstall and press uninstall, just like on a regular Android device. There's very little difference between this and a sort of regular Android phone, apart from how you control it. The other way to install apps is to do it through the application website. So I'm going to demonstrate that. I'm going to go and download it to Skyfire. Just an application I know they've got the file on their site. And what you're looking for is an APK file that you can download. Skyfire has this on their Android version. Not for the latest version, but for the older version, you can download the APK file. So here we go, it says launch your marketplace and install it, but you can also download Skyfire. Download that, and it'll just download the regular APK file that you can use. Not downloading yet. That's it. Downloading, you can go up here and you can see it downloading in your little pull down bar. Downloading. Okay, download complete. Install. Installing application installed, and then you can go back into your menu and bring that up. So it does work. Again, it's done a sideways thing. It, oh, I don't know why it does this for some apps, but usually once you get through the first few setup pages, it seems to disappear. There we go. I also had to turn off the screen, also rotate. Not because it rotates, but because some apps turn the screen around. So it does work very well. Some things like the phone, if you try and use a phone it just crashes. So if I try and phone something on here, it'll crash. So you get quite a lot of crashing like that. It does work. If you're looking for something interesting to run on a netbook, definitely try Android x86, it was very good. But if you're looking for something that's going to be very stable and easy to, and you know exactly how to use it, and you're not that good with computers, I wouldn't recommend running this right now. It's a bit too buggy for that. But yeah, it's very powerful. You've got your 
it's very good on a screen like this. It's fantastic because just look how much you can fit on your screen. You can fit so much of more of like websites on your screen than on a regular netbook, and it runs super fast. So I'll show you shutting it down. So shut it down. He says press the power button on the machine. There's no built-in sh power shutdown option, <laughs> and it gives you this little thing here. The mouse goes a bit jumpy when the screen's dimmed like this. I don't know why. And you can choose between these different options. Choose power off or reboot. Power off. It says your machine will shut down. Press OK. It says shutting down. It takes a little while. It takes quite a long time to shut down for some reason, but it does work, so yeah. And there you go. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And you can also visit my website at camerangrey.me.